Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a Valheim update video. This update looks like it's going to be coming in very soon, in the next week or so maybe. It's just gone live on the test branch. You can access the test branch by joining the Valheim Discord and following the steps to get the passwords in the PTS channel. Obviously, I've shown you some of this stuff in the past. What the big one is, is it's adding the blobs as an event back to the game. It's been there in the code, but it's never worked, but now it does. So expect to see a blob event happen when you're playing the game from now on. They will come and try and attack you. But there's some crucial information you need to know about why you don't have to worry if you've got a base. And there are some other tweaks to the events. As well as enemy AI, it does look like they're getting a little bit more aggressive in certain situations. So we're going to cover all that, plus a Game Informer biz article interview with G Portal, or kind of something along them lines, talking about the success of them and how much money they made off of the back of Valheim, but also some crucial information about performance and how developers Iongate really did improve the performance of Valheim so quickly in the space of 10 days after launch. So as always, for all of that and the best in survival games news, please make sure you leave a like if you find it useful and let's go. So if you want to do the event itself, it's pretty simple. Just type in event, leave a space and blobs and it will crack on a foul smell from the swamps. And you see it's quite a distance away there. They're coming over. I'll bet slowly. Now obviously they've got the same sort of range as other creatures. So if they don't immediately see you, they're going to go and just pretty much harass any of the wildlife. Come on. I just want to see if they actually do any damage to the base parts. Oh. Was that one like right behind me? It was one right behind you sneaky little bugger you. Come on blobbies. Come on. Attack the base. Attack it. No. Okay, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Obviously it's showing not much damage going onto the base at all still. I think that's pretty pretty conclusive that the base won't get destroyed by the blobs. So just more of a, a fun event or event if you're out and about and you get cornered by one of these, yeah, you may be in a little bit of trouble, but it's not necessarily going to um, destroy your base by the looks of things. And this is not a story event, so this won't trigger if you defeat a certain boss. This just might have a happen, a chance to trigger maybe any time, or maybe after you've killed your first slime. Yeah, let's use the most ridiculous firework sword in a showcase video, just to really show you guys what's going on. So there are some other tweaks to the events as well. The monster AI is going to be more aggressive attacking structures now when unable to attack the player, among other things. So I guess we could do another event in a minute and, and test it out. Grey Dwarfs are now going to throw better, so they'll have better aim. Also to do with the events, the wolf event is only going to happen after Bowmass has been killed from now on. And the Moda army can now trigger in the mountains. It was a bit weird that this one didn't actually trigger while you're in the mountains, considering it is all mountain creatures, i.e. the drakes. So yeah, it kind of makes sense. This will now work in the mountains, so if you are in the mountains, you do have a risk of having this event happen. But again, it should only happen if you've killed Bomas but haven't defeated Moda yet. And something that you've only been able to see when you've gone into cheats mode or creative mode like this, is the maypole. It's going to be enabled for their summer sort of, uh, I guess, event. Now, I say event in loose terms. It doesn't look like it does anything. It doesn't look like it's going to enable anything or give you any buffs. It's simply just a nice little summer maypole to have. You see there, it costs four dandelion, four thistle. You'll need the workbench and 10 pieces of wood. That should be working for you guys now. Without using cheats, you should be able to see it and craft it. I think it would have been cool if, if you had one of these equipped, maybe it made the days a bit longer, like so you could explore a bit more without fear of uh, other creatures getting a bit more dangerous, or give you some sort of buff during the daytime hours, or extra comfort. So maybe it does do that, let me know if you do place one in your base, does it add to your comfort level at all? And I've just enabled the forest's moving event, see if we can show maybe the Grey Dwarves having a bit more of a better aim. Um, uh, maybe? I don't know. It's hard to tell, really. I mean, they're throwing, for sure. They're lobbing it. It looks like they're not, like, zooming in on you. It's got a bit more of an arch to it, like a little bit of a loop, the way that the stones are throwing. I wouldn't necessarily say they've still got great aim. Let's face it. You can outrun them pretty much pretty easily. Let's just stand here just for two seconds. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a little bit quicker, maybe. Well, that's been added as well, or will be coming. And it does look like you can see they're going from my maypole pretty 
pretty hardcore already, one of them at least, two of them, yeah, look, see they're trying to destroy it. So that's going to be for all creatures, all AI in the game. If you have an event or they are just near your base, they may start to destroy your base a little bit more than they normally would. They've also fixed a SFX issue that was happening, uh, that's been corrected. Open container fix where an issue had to click contain multiple times to open it has been fixed. And a random save bug that solved a very unusual case of world corruption caused when shutting down. So this was what was posted yesterday. It may not be the end of the fixes going into the next little update. But at the moment, that's what we got and that's what I had time to show you guys today. Of course, if you're still wondering somehow where the updates are for the Hearth and Home, you haven't seen my videos talking about the fact they've changed the roadmap plans a little bit. They're going to be offering two chunky updates in the future, Hearth and Home and then the Mistlands. But it does look like they're also going to be offering much smaller updates with more content in them rather than saving it all for just big stuff. Hearth and Home is scheduled to come out before the end of quarter three and our best guess is in August at some point. And yeah, just a little bit of interest for people that like this stuff. Valheim, obviously huge success, 7 million players by now. And in the first few weeks, lots of you guys wanted to have your own servers. Valheim's very different. It doesn't have any official network like Ark Survival Evolved or Conan Exiles. The companies, Wildcard and Funcom, they have to actually pay money to server providers like Gportal, like Netrado, my partners, to actually host the official servers. And so they tried to do a deal G Portal were desperate to host the official servers and they were told obviously no the game doesn't run like that you can literally play the game and it's your server that's why it's so limited you can only have 10 players at the moment so the high call is a little bit of I guess a feather blowing up G Portal pretty much blowing their own trumpet and saying that they've supported devs and they got loads of servers out for people that wanted to rent them it's pretty much just a marketing article and you know game industry biz that's exactly what they're there for for the industry people so yeah and they somehow slightly try and say that because they got keys to some of their creators in their program that they may contribute it to Valheim's success uh no Valheim was pretty big straight away but through word of mouth through a, a big subset of streamers and youtubers that kept up with this stuff then getting jumped on by the big guys. It wasn't like the five top streamers on Twitch jumped on Valheim the minute it came out. This game was under the radar for a couple days. There were big streams that hadn't touched it for about a week. So it grew and grew and grew. And definitely, I think it was word of mouth. Seeing a fantastic game that helped Valheim grow so big. I was on it on day one, but I know so many other survival content creators, big ones that didn't have a clue about Valheim. So yeah, there's definitely a case, I think, of growing by word of mouth and positive reviews uh, rather than this idea that just because some service provider gave some keys to some content creators that was one of the big success points I mean I'm sure it helped a little bit of course but no obviously they made a shit ton of money they made hundred and twenty thousand pounds in a space of a month or so when they had 57,000 servers that's how many of you guys actually rented out a server within a few weeks of the game being live 57,000 of you just with gportal now I know that in the trade on my partners and everyone else, they also had big numbers as well. So you can imagine that a lot of you guys really wanted to have that experience with them. So it does raise the question why they didn't go down the route of having official servers. Because then you would have had more players and I presume it would have functioned just as well. But we know that Valheim is pretty intensive. Although it's a small little game, only like 1 GB to download, it did huge use up huge amounts of your ram at the beginning and so that's one other interesting aspect of this promo sort of article that the performance for a core and i'm getting a bit boring now the technical speak but basically at its launch it was 60 percent from one core so you can imagine if you've got eight cores you're trying to use maybe the game uses all eight of them then it would be using up over half of that core power just to power the game but within 10 days, the developers, Iron Gate Studios, reduced that from 60% to 5%. And I find that pretty interesting. I like that sign of stuff. It really shows to me that Iron Gate done a great job in optimizing the game very quickly and getting it running better. I'm not saying it was the best still after 10 days, but certainly in 10 days to get your performance from 60% to 5% really shows the, the, the quality in, in trying to get the game running on lower end geared, you know, rigs and stuff. I know there has been some up and downs with Valheim. Some people are still reporting huge issues where they just can't play the game because 
there's lots of problems with crashes and stuff like that but it's not the most intensive game really when you look at the specs but the ram usage at the beginning there definitely will seem to be some sort of issue but yeah they made like twenty thousand pounds in the first week judging by how much it costs to rent a Valheim server for one month and none of that money goes back to the developers either that's another thing I've got to say this is why I'm a bit dubious of this article trying to claim any kind of success um, basically when server providers do have servers like Ark, like Conan as I said they have to pay for that they get discounts I'm sure but they pay for the official ones and then if you want a private server we pay for them the developers get no money from any of the sales from servers and that's pretty much worldwide in the industry of server providers no one is kicking up money back to Funcom or Arc for their servers for Conan and Arc and stuff like that literally it's these server providers that take all of that money when you rent a server I thought I'd clarify that a bit because over the years I have seen a lot of uh, miscommunication and people accusing devs of doing certain things just to make money. Sure, devs have made some stupid decisions over servers in the last few years uh, where they've maybe not had enough servers running. But yeah, that's because it costs them money. So they really are trying to be careful. And I'm a bit critical of that, especially big games. They should have enough servers for DLC launches and stuff. But that's why there's never enough servers. It's because they use these server providers and sometimes there's a shortage because of the worldwide shortage in the chips. And that was affecting stuff that was going on with Valheim. They sold out as well. And other times it is because they just don't want to spend the money so in a way i'm really glad that valheim doesn't have that way to go they don't do the official server route yes it's a pain in the butt you have to go and spend money for a server but that is like pretty much every survival game out there if you want to play with just your friends and be able to customize and do what you want with it official servers really do suit big more mmo style games like conan and like ark but for sure, I definitely would like to see a future where Valheim could potentially support more players, even if it's just privately on a private server, where we could have slots for up to 20 or 30 people. I have seen some mods and some people were trying to do it as well, but the performance I'm sure does take a massive hit, especially when you get to later stages where everyone's building huge castles and stuff like that. But yeah, by the way they're going, the way Valheim are focusing on fixes and performance over necessary content, it really says to me that once the game is out of early access, this game will run like butter, and I really do believe it will be pretty easy to port over to consoles in the future too. They seem to be really dedicated to getting the game running well with the hot fixes and the issues and the bugs being the focus, rather than just chucking stuff in there and never getting around to fixing it, just like Ark Survival Evolved did. But yeah, bit of interest, you might not find that interesting, but I always try and cover all, as many aspects of a game as possible and hopefully I'll give you a little bit of insight into how servers work. So yeah, well done G Portal for giving some keys out to your creators. I'm sure that £120,000 you made in the first few weeks maybe helped a little. As always, I'll be back with more update content and stuff. Go and check out my Let's Plays I'm doing at the moment with my Ratbag crew. Special guest to Pilgrim Project at the moment every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. And I'm off to Scotland to get married. So I'll see you Ratbags later.